An impactful severe weather event is expected to unfold Tuesday afternoon and evening. Coming up, we're going to track each line of these potential severe thunderstorms. Also, a DeForest man accused of planning to kill a female acquaintance will not be on trial due to a no contest plea. We take a look at the determining factors that led to the judge to accept the plea. And later, after a person is bitten by a dog inside a store, how the county is looking to limit these types of incidents. Welcome to News 3 Now at 6. And good evening. Thanks for joining us. We are going to start with that possibility of severe weather that's moving through all of southern Wisconsin tomorrow. The News 3 Now weather team has been very busy keeping an eye on these storms, which are expected to be more severe than the storms that we saw in parts of the area earlier today. For the latest, let's check your first warm forecast and Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington. Alex? Yeah, that's all right, Eric. Those showers and thunderstorms that we had this morning, they're out over Lake Michigan. We had a severe thunderstorm watch till 5 o'clock for areas south and east of Madison, but what will be rather up as we go on to this time tomorrow night, 24 hours from now, could be considerably more significant. Let's go right to future track. This evening looking nice, pleasant, quiet, calm, but as we head towards midnight, notice the showers and thunderstorms already starting upstream, meaning to the west, entering northeastern Iowa, southeastern Minnesota, and those will affect our southwestern Wisconsin communities from Juneau and Adams counties south and west over towards Prairie du Chien by the time you get to the wee hours of your Tuesday morning. And this is bout number one. About number two, maybe three, maybe four lines of thunderstorms moving across southern Wisconsin Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening. Don't want to count out Tuesday morning, too, with Savannah and Kelly here working the morning in the noon shows tomorrow that we could have an isolated severe storm in the morning. Those storms would be more hail and gusty winds. But then enter the tornado threat as we go on Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening for all of southern Wisconsin. Right now, again, the good stuff. Let's talk about that, too. There's some of that in the forecast as well. We're in the mid to upper 60s, a little warmer off towards the west, but not warm enough where we have gotten humid enough and warm enough to have widespread showers and thunderstorms this evening. Dane County, we've had a lot of clouds. We had the showers throughout the day today. That limits the threat for thunderstorms this evening with our temperatures hovering right around 70. 69 here in Madison, there's the sun out. Winds are calm. Dew point, that's a measure of moisture. When it gets in the 60s, you're starting to feel a little bit of that humidity, and that's going to go up even further on your Tuesday. Planning the night tonight, a nice night, so quiet, the calm before the storm, so to speak. But as we go into Tuesday afternoon and evening, the threats for severe weather are high for wind, high for hail, and also high for tornadoes. We're going to track again those lines of thunderstorms with future track in a few minutes. All right, Alex, we'll be watching those storms all day today. Tomorrow as well, you can stay updated with a free First Warm Weather and Traffic app. And with it, you'll have your latest radar, conditions, and much more at your fingertips. Just search WISC Weather in your app store. Meanwhile, in Rock County, the severe weather from earlier today may have played a role in a house fire there. It was actually Dane County Dispatch that took the call at 532 this morning. Crews were sent to a home on West Holt Road in the town of Union in Rock County. According to the fire crews, it appears the fire started when a lightning strike hit a tree nearby. That fire then traveled along a gas line up to the house. There was a lot of fire damage in there. I mean, the crews, we had three or four crews working together at once, you know, putting out a lot of, there was a lot of fire suppression. We call it overhaul where you're digging in the walls, looking, looking to put out hot spots. It's just a lot of man intensive work being done. Well, the family inside was able to escape thanks to working smoke detectors. There are no reports of any injuries. Right now, the Salvation Army and Red Cross are helping those impacted families. Right now in Janesville, a man is facing charges for two attempted murders. The Janesville PD say, says they arrested a 27-year-old for randomly stabbing two strangers over the weekend. This was at the Walgreens on West Court Street. Police say officers arrived at the store about 9.30 Saturday night and found two people injured. They took him to the hospital. Police eventually found the suspect walking nearby with blood on him. The two victims are recovering. No word on their conditions. The trial for Gabriel Savage, meant to take place this week, has been called off due to a no-contest plea. Savage is the DeForest man accused of planning to kill a female acquaintance back in 2022. Our Maddie Heimsch is here with more on what would have been the 21-year-old's trial. Savage faced six felony charges, but all but one were dismissed by the prosecutor last week. The remaining charge attempted first degree intentional homicide. Savage pleaded no contest to that final felony. The judge on the case accepted the plea and effectively rendered a jury trial useless. You have a trial when there's a dispute over the facts, right? That, that's, that's what leads to a trial. When you can't 
agree. Those facts refer to the determination that Savage was in fact mentally ill when he was found parked outside that classmate's home with an assault rifle, ammunition, and handcuffs in his car. Normally in these cases you have a dueling set of experts, right? One side says, no, no, he was he was mentally ill, and the other the other side's experts said he wasn't. But if you have a situation where both sides are like, he was really mentally ill at the time he committed this crime, they, they'd be going through the trial for, for nothing. Instead of opening statements that were to begin Monday, court officials scheduled a final hearing for Tuesday in which Savage will be committed to a mental health facility for inpatient care. Kind of rare to see that level of agreement between defense, prosecution, and judge in a case. The then 19-year-old was originally arrested on counts of attempted stalking and kidnapping, but when he posted bail, officials re-arrested him that same day with the six felony charges. We can just agree to that and, you know, resolve the case without making 12 citizens come in and sit here for two weeks. So between a no contest plea, an agreement between the defense and the prosecution, and a clear need for mental health treatment, Savage's trial ended before it ever began. Maddie Himes reporting there. The Columbia County Sheriff's Office searching for a portage man allegedly involved in a deadly crash. 26-year-old Keegan Neveln is wanted for fleeing the crash before first responders got to the scene. Now, this happened in the town of Lewiston Sunday night about 11. A 21-year-old woman was found in the passenger seat of the vehicle. Authorities say one person has already been arrested for helping Neveln flee the scene. Anyone with knowledge of his whereabouts is urged to contact the Columbia County Sheriff's Office. And in Grant County, deputies are searching for a man who was allegedly involved in a hit-and-run crash last week. It was May 17th. A two-vehicle crash reported just after 5 p.m. It happened along Highway 35 at Budworth School Road in B-Town Township. One of the vehicles involved a green Jeep reportedly drove away from the scene. 47-year-old Chad Klein of Cassville has been identified as a suspect. His juvenile daughter was in the Jeep with him at the time of the crash and suffered a minor injury. Klein has already evaded police multiple times. He faces charges of hit and run and fleeing an officer. Anyone who knows where he might be is asked to call the Grant County Sheriff's Office. A dog attack that happened over the weekend inside a Madison Goodwill store left one person injured. Jalen Banks joins us now with the next steps a public health agency is taking after that attack. Jalen? Eric, Public Health Madison, Dane County are currently searching for a dog after a bit of shopper at the Verona Road Goodwill on Saturday. The shopper attempted to pet the unleashed dog after it approached them. Now Public Health Madison, Dane County hoped to locate the dog to determine its vaccination status. Ensure that that dog goes through quarantine to, you know, just ensure that the animal doesn't have rabies. And then we can report that back to the victim saying, okay, the dog's passed quarantine. You don't have to worry about rabies, go forward. Recently, both the city of Madison and Dane County have passed legislation that require physical restraints for animals that have been cited for causing an injury off the owner's property. They are physically restrained when on the owner's property, but outside their home by either a fence or a tether, and when off the property, wear a muzzle. The dog is described as a short-haired chihuahua wearing a pink shirt and the owner is described as an adult Hispanic woman. All right, Jalen, thank you. A road in the city of Middleton is closed down after a water main break there. It's on the orders of the city of Middleton Public Works Department, which is closing the right lane of Century Avenue near Tomahawk Court. Eastbound traffic is being rerouted while repairs are being made. The city is asking drivers to use an alternate route while those repairs are being done. The World Naked Bike Ride is returning to Madison next month. June 15th, dozens of people will be exercising their oil independence by using human-powered machines. Both bicycles and nudity are not mandatory, and those participating are expected to extend that courtesy to everyone else. The ride will begin at 11 a.m., and registered participants will be informed of a gathering point at least one day in advance. And coming up on News 3 Now at 6, a candy company expanding a recall it previously declared earlier this month. Plus, could the Affordable Care Act soon cover dental care? The new rule the Biden administration finalized that may give you that option. Stay with us. You're watching News 3 Now at 6, brought to you by Ruber Law Offices. We've successfully represented people injured in truck accidents for more than 35 years. We know what it takes to get the results you deserve. Groover Law Offices. One call, that's all. As summer approaches, is your house ready? Over 7 out of 10 homes are poorly insulated. Is yours? Here are some of the signs. Is your house too cold in the winter? Is it too hot in the summer? 
Does your furnace and AC run almost nonstop? Do you have different temperatures in different rooms? Are your energy bills too high? You don't need a new home. You need better insulation. Call now for $1,200 off whole home insulation plus a $1,200 tax credit. USA Insulation. Thousands of our heroes face the difficult choice between keeping their heat and power on or facing homelessness. 21,000 Wisconsin veterans are living below the poverty line, many impacted by physical or mental health challenges. Wisconsin loses three veterans to suicide every week. Together, our mission is to provide all struggling Wisconsin veterans with a critical survival safety net that keeps them safely in their homes. You can make a real difference by providing a donation to the Wisconsin Heat and Housing for Heroes Initiative. With 95 cents of every dollar donated, going directly to those right here in your community. Help by visiting www.heatforheroes.org or by calling 1-800-891-9276. That's 800-891-9276. Wednesday at 10. Toxic water, poison families at a military base. Now a local veteran shares his struggles applying for government help for his sick wife. They're fighting it. I'm looking for answers to why these toxic water denials keep happening. Wednesday at 10. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Welcome back. The Palmer Candy Company expanding its recall of its white-coated confectionery items due to a potential salmonella threat. The Food and Drug Administration says the company's patriotic white fudge cookies and drizzled caramel corn are now included in this recall. Now, earlier this month, Palmer recalled several other products, including caramel swirl pretzels, cookies and cream yummy chow, munchy medley, and peanut butter snack mix. Consumers who bought those items are advised to return them for a full refund. Target is cutting prices on thousands of popular items. The big box chain says effective today, it's lowering prices on a wide range of household products and food. The retailer is trying to lure back inflation-wary shoppers. Target says prices on 1,500 items have already been cut, with thousands of additional deals to be had by the end of the summer. Other major retailers, including Ikea and Aldi, have been reducing prices in recent months to reattract consumers into stores. Red Lobster filing for bankruptcy. The largest seafood restaurant chain in the world says it had to settle more than a billion dollars in debt. The company plans to sell its businesses to its lenders. In turn, Red Lobster will receive financing to stay afloat, but more restaurants will be closing. So far, Red Lobsters in Wauwatosa and La Crosse have closed, but Madison's east side location is open. Dental coverage for adults could be added to plans under the Affordable Care Act in the future. Last month, the Biden administration finalized a rule that would give states the option to add adult dental coverage to Affordable Care Act plans. Under the rule, states have until 2025 to decide if they'll require that insurers cover dental benefits for adults. The dental benefits would not take effect until 2027. So far, no states have signaled that they intend to require dental benefits under the ACA plans. Still ahead, the DNR sending out a warning about wildlife for those planning to head outside this Memorial Day weekend. Plus, a new Amtrak route bringing service to communities in southern and western Wisconsin tomorrow. Why some say it's bringing Wisconsin Dells back to its roots. And we could see some strong storms moving through tomorrow. Alex will have the latest details. His complete forecasts after the break. Ride a chip. Don't worry, my cousin's got a guy. <laughs> right now, get two for one windows and no interest for one year. Hurry, call now. Call 866 for Feltco. This is me, and this was my stubborn body fat. My name's Adrian, and Sonobello changed my life. Sonobello is America's number one cosmetic surgery specialist, and they permanently removed my body fat in just one visit. After having two kids, my body, it changed a lot. I tried everything to lose the fat, but nothing seemed to work. Sonobello's board-certified surgeons use micro-laser technology to safely target and remove your diet-resistant fat cells permanently on your stomach, back, chin, and more. I've seen such dramatic results. My tummy is gone, my double chin is gone, and my hourglass shape is back. This was the mommy makeover that I deserved. 
schedule your free, no obligation consultation and find out how you can get $250 off instantly. Call 1-888-357-3263 or go to sonobello.com. What if antibodies from sharks cured cancer? What if breast cancer was prevented with a vaccine? What if new science became clinical trials in real time? At UW Health Carbone Cancer Center, we search the depths of the ocean, the edges of space, turning possibilities into life-saving solutions and what-ifs into remarkable realities. UW Health Carbone Cancer Center. Remarkable. Tina, the Tina Turner Musical. See her triumphant story and prepare to be ecstatically blown away direct from Broadway. Playing June 11th through 16th at Overture Center. Tickets at Overture.org. Nobody wants to put a new roof over their head. It's too expensive. And if they can extend the life of that roof and get five more years or ten more years, it's a no-brainer. What RoofMax does is it helps people in that they don't have to spend that $15,000, $20,000 on a new roof. They can spend pennies on the dollar. The RoofMax product was a small percentage of cost of replacing a roof. This is a great financial decision for us as a community. You're watching News 3 Now at 6. Well, it is all aboard. That's what Amtrak hopes will happen when they launch the new Borealis service tomorrow. Our Kyle Pazorski visited two of the stops the route will make twice daily, hearing how anticipation for the launch is growing. The new service will bring passengers by rail through parts of south and western Wisconsin to stations just like this one here in Portage. Community leaders I spoke with tell me they're excited about the possibility of having new travelers coming to their towns. The Borealis route will traverse these tracks connecting Chicago and the Twin Cities through its daytime passenger service. It's a great experience. Portage Mayor Mitchell Craig tells News 3 Now if his past experience riding Amtrak is anything to go by, Borealis will bring the same level of service, hoping the line will bring more tourists to the region. And we think that there's going to be an influx of people coming to Portage to ride the train because now it's easier to ride because there's two different trains a day. Previously, Amtrak's Empire Builder was the only option. So, I mean, it's more convenient for people to ride the train. However, Mayor Ed Voynich of Wisconsin Dells is not as convinced it will bring an influx of tourists to his community. If it was affordable, uh, maybe so, but uh, I'd say 99.9% .9 of our tourists come Via car. He says, however, there remains a level of excitement in the Dells surrounding Borealis. Additionally, the Visitor and Convention Bureau tells News 3 Now the service will bring the Dells back to its roots as most visitors in the late 1800s and early 1900s came via train. Reporting in Portage, Kyle Pzorski, News 3 Now. Kyle, thank you. Amtrak has previously announced its fares will be $41 each way from Chicago to St. Paul with adjusted rates for other trips based on distance. We could be in for some severe weather from now through tomorrow. Alex again joins us. A complete look at the forecast. Yes, Eric, let's break all of those bouts of potential severe thunderstorms that we're expecting Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, going on into your Tuesday evening. Significant severe weather is possible Tuesday afternoon and evening. High winds, hail, a few tornadoes. Some of those tornadoes could be on the stronger end of the EF spectrum. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. First, where is this weather event right now? Well, we had our weather event from this morning that prompted some alert day conditions. That has now moved off portions of this uh, lower Michigan. We're looking off to the west now. This is upstream. Notice a few showers. Thunderstorm is popping up in South Dakota and there in portions of De in Nebraska. This is going to be racing off to the east. This is going to be an impactful weather system for much of the upper Midwest, including all of southern Wisconsin. Nothing impactful right now. Gorgeous outside. We've now had the sun is allowed to come out 69 degrees calm winds. If we would have gotten this sunshine to have come out early afternoon. We would be looking at thunderstorm threats tonight, but that looks like things will be quiet until we eye up the wee hours of your Tuesday morning. According to future track, notice the thunderstorms over southeastern Minnesota, northeastern Iowa. Kelly and Savannah will be coming in around two tomorrow morning, carrying you through your morning shows and up through the noon hour. And then I'll get in in the late morning hours as the enhanced risk. This is getting up there. This is level three out of five for all of southern Wisconsin from the Dells Juneau and Adams counties, south to the Wisconsin-Illinois border. 
these these sorts of enhanced risks are not issued as often as a, ma uh, a marginal risk or the slight risk. And when you see hashed coloring here, this is for tornadoes. This means the potential is there for strong tornadoes, and perhaps one or two of those could be long tracked as well. The wind threat is also very high. We're talking the higher end winds, 70, 80 mile per hour winds with these thunderstorms as they move through. The hail threat is there, but not as high as the wind and the tornado threat at this point in time. Here we go. Track it. Midnight entering over southwestern Wisconsin by four, five, six o'clock in the morning, stretching from Juneau and Adams counties to north of Madison, south and west to Prairie du Chien. This is round number one. Here comes round number two, right around lunchtime. Then round number three, eyeing up the Mississippi River with the potential for rotating supercells. These can produce long tracked families of tornadoes and high winds. Could even have a few isolated supercells out ahead of that line. As we head towards eight o'clock, look at this line stretching from east of the Dells right through Madison down through Janesville all hazards possible with this line including spin up tornadoes that can spin up quite rapidly and the good news is is that it's out of here by the time we get to midnight but a busy day again three four bouts potentially of thunderstorms and all of them could potentially be severe on alert day Tuesday good news is we'll quiet down Wednesday and Thursday on and off chances for showers and storms as we head towards the Memorial Day weekend but there will be some dry time as we head into that holiday weekend as well time for a little bit of viewer photos here if we have an opportunity to show program 72 uh, program 72 may have some photos here that we can show we're going to show those there Steve if not, that's a okay. We can just toss it over to Zach in sports. Or to me first. Or to Eric. That's all right. <laughs> well, as many are preparing for the upcoming holiday weekend that Alex mentioned, the DNR wants to remind you to help keep the wildlife safe and wild during the summer. The DNR gets several reports, as you might imagine, of baby animals out there, and they say you should keep your distance. Not doing so can put the animal under a lot of stress and also put you at risk of getting sick or catching a parasite. If you do find a wild animal that appears sick or injured, they say leave it alone. Take pictures and make notes about what you're seeing and then call the DNR or licensed wildlife rehabilitator for guidance. And coming up in sports, NCAA championship bound. What it means for Cameron Huss to be headed to California. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now first warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. My son, Nick, took illicit fentanyl, which cost him his life. And knowing that my son is never coming back is the worst thing that I will have to live with for the rest of my life. Tammy Baldwin's been with us every step of the way. She just got a major bill passed to really crack down on fentanyl. She doesn't just talk the talk, but she actually walks the walk. I cannot tell you how much we appreciate Tammy Baldwin fighting this fight. I'm Tammy Baldwin. I approve this message. Save big money with these hot deals in Menards. All prices after 11% rebate. Colored wood mulch is just $1.97. These Dawson retaining wall blocks are only 99 cents each. 10-inch hanging baskets are just $6.99. And this colonial casing is only $1.99. These hot deals won't last long. Hurry in before time runs out. Sign up for Menards emails to get more hot deals. Plus the weekly flyer right to your inbox. Save big money at Menards. This famous wood fence from the show Home Improvement had to have boards replaced 13 times in only nine years. Our fences outlast wood three to one and are all backed by our extensive lifetime warranty. This month, save $1,000 on your project. Visit the website or call the number for your new fence today. Rugability. We straight made that word up. How else to describe the otherwise indescribable, rugged, capable, incredible versatility and affordability of a Honda SUV? Kelly Blue Books KBB.com calls Honda the best value brand. Car and Driver calls Honda the winningest brand in 10 best history. But we like Rugabilitility. And you'll like the Incredifantabulous deals. So see your Wisconsin Heartland Honda dealer today. Honda gets Wisconsin. We've been everywhere. We've coded patios, pool decks, basements, hospitals, warehouses, walkways, man caves, churches, schools, airports, hotels, and garages. If it's concrete, TSR will coat it. Hi, I'm Jeff from Nuts.com. When my grandfather started this business in 1929, he relied on four important values. Freshness, quality, variety, and service. 
I'm proud to carry on his legacy, but from a bigger space. We still freshly roast, season, and dip delicious nuts here in New Jersey and deliver them with the freshest dried fruits, snacks, and sweets to families that love our products all around the country, including mine. We think you'll love nuts.com too. So check us out and enjoy 20% off plus free shipping on your first order. It's been a while since a Badger advanced to the NCAA championship on the golf course. 2008 was the last time. Well, that is until Cameron Huss punched his ticket to California last week. He'll fly out Wednesday, play a practice round Thursday, and then the competition begins on Friday. And for Huss, who grew up in this state, having the opportunity to represent Badger men's golf on the big stage is a pretty cool feeling. It means a lot. Um, being from Wisconsin, grew up a Wisconsin fan, um, it means everything. It's, it was always a dream in high school, and I don't think I got this far in my dreams, so it means a lot. We're a program that's kind of turning around right now, and I, I just hope that I'm just leading us to a better place. It's a testament to his hard work, um, his belief in himself, uh, belief in the program, and, uh, you know, he, he really wants to represent the state and this university. Wisconsin football wrapped up spring practice a couple weeks ago, so now the guys are taking a little break before summer conditioning hits, and then it's time for fall camp. And one of the biggest questions heading into the season for UW, who's going to be QB1? Will it be Miami transfer Tyler Van Dyke or last year's backup in Braden Locke? Well, no answer yet, but Luke Fickle did tell Andy Staples of On3 that he's happy Locke stayed a Badger. Been a great battle, and we're fortunate that, that because we brought in Tyler Van Dyke that Braden Locke didn't say, okay, well, you don't have enough confidence in me that, that I'm going to move on. Um, he's got a great relationship with, obviously, with Coach Longo, with me, believes in the things that we're doing, and, and he's willing to kind of battle through some of the things that he had to go through last year and even bring in another guy. So when, when, when you've got those kind of guys in your program, that's why you feel better. And fresh off a regional championship, Warhawk Baseball is two wins away from the D3 World Series. Whitewater will host UW Lacrosse in the Super Regionals for a best of three series. Whitewater went four and one against Lacrosse this season. And game one of that best of three series is Friday at noon. Hopefully the weather's nice for that yeah, for Friday. Yeah. We'd like to get it out of our system tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully we can get everything out of the system tomorrow. There is a chance of a shower storm on Friday, but it shouldn't be all day washout, so that's good news. Not good news, though, about tomorrow. Significant uh, threat for severe weather Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening. We could be looking at severe weather as early as Savannah and Kelly's shows on your Tuesday morning. Good news is, though, after this weather system moves through, conditions will improve on Wednesday and Thursday. Hail, high winds, a few tornadoes across southern Wisconsin. Some of those tornadoes could be on the stronger end of the EF spectrum. We're talking EF2s, EF3s, maybe greater, not out of the question, on a impactful Tuesday. Tuesday. These are the threats that we're up against. Strong winds, hail, and again, the threat for tornadoes as we move on into your Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday evening, and then we quiet down, thankfully, Wednesday and Thursday. All right, Alex, thanks. Thanks for joining us for News Now at 6. Have a great evening. We'll be back here tonight at 10.